tests involving the orbiter Atlantis at the Kennedy Space Center, Florida, were part of a comprehensive NASA-wide program to certify that when the shuttle does lift off again in early 1988, every conceivable effort will have been made to ensure the safety and reliability of the entire system. One of the most significant modifications being made is in the design of the solid rocket motors, the white boosters used to propel shuttles into orbit. These rockets are made up of segments, some assembled or stacked at Kennedy prior to a launch. The joint between these rocket segments is being redesigned. As shown in this cross-sectional view, the new design uses a capture latch to achieve a much tighter fit. A third O-ring is also included, which allows engineers to verify that the joint is working properly. And the insulation in the segments, separated by a putty-filled gap originally, is now bonded together. The new joint will be subjected to an extensive evaluation program, including numerous rocket segment test firings in facilities like this one at the Morton Thiokol Company in Utah before it is deemed flightworthy. The manager of the solid rocket motor redesign team at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama is John Thomas. We're taking every step possible in order to assure that the design is safe with as many tests on as many test articles as is prudent. Solid rockets have traditionally been test fired in the horizontal position. The National Research Council overseeing NASA's redesign effort has been briefed and concurs with the agency's decision to continue horizontal tests that simulate launch forces. This makes it possible to subject the rockets to even greater stresses than they encounter during an actual shuttle flight. In an effort to take advantage of their flight operations experience, several astronauts, including Bob Crippen, a veteran of four shuttle missions, have been given key management roles within the agency. Having overseen the restructuring of management and communications, Crippen has been named Deputy Director for Shuttle Operations. Astronaut Brian O'Connor, pilot of the 23rd shuttle flight, is chairman of a newly established Space Flight Safety Panel with oversight responsibility for all NASA manned space program activities. Recently, O'Connor talked about the panel's role. The idea that people ought to have in any flying operation is that everyone is responsible for safety. The purpose of the safety officer or for a safety panel like we have would be to help the managers as advisors uh, to point out things that we think may be deficiencies that they should correct because they are responsible for the safe operation of the, of the program. With flight safety as a goal, work is continuing to improve the shuttle's landing system. The greatest problems have occurred during landings at Kennedy, where the rough textured runway has caused excessive tread wear on the tires. At the Langley Research Center's Aircraft Landing Dynamics Facility, shuttle tires are mounted on a huge carriage. This 54-ton frame is then propelled down a runway at speeds up to 250 miles per hour, simulating the forces of a shuttle landing. Here. Engineers monitor energy stress, wear patterns, and burn marks. About 10,000 gallons of water are used to drive the carriage with nearly 2 million pounds of thrust, the equivalent of almost 18 Gs. The people responsible for the shuttle's main engines are busy as well, extensively re-evaluating almost every aspect of this system. The main engines have performed well during almost five years of shuttle flights, but the Challenger accident has resensitized everyone to flight safety issues. Main engine tests are being carried out at the National Space Technology Laboratories in Mississippi and the Rocketdyne Corporation's facility in California. One of the hardest facts to accept is that no matter how much retesting and redesign is done, no matter how much effort is put into making the shuttle as safe and reliable as possible, there will always be risk involved. Perhaps best summing up the way the people within NASA are dealing with this issue is the manager of the shuttle main engine propulsion project office, Joe Lombardo. My personal judgment on trying to make the, the shuttle a successful long-range program is to make the next launch as safe as we can possibly make it, to keep all our efforts dedicated and all our evaluations and analysis dedicated to that goal. We'll get that one behind us, and then we'll approach the next one. NASA's Shuttle Recovery Program, a comprehensive effort aimed at a successful return to spaceflight in 1988 
and beyond.